Check, I want you to listen to me real close, especially to the kids and to the younger generations who are growing up out there in the streets, in the game. You know, I might be the only one, I might be the first person to tell you that there's no such thing as a pimp god. You might not think that I know what I'm talking about, you know, who's this guy, you know, Christopher Christopher talking about pimping, but let me tell you something here. I grew up in Las Vegas. And you really think your bitch cares? Come on. She's flossing your haterism. They're straight the sclerism. On top of that, she's playing games, showing your homies a favoritism. Don't slip into the lane system. People want to the star, man. Ain't it for that these bitches change? Ain't it for that these bitches change? Come on. This ain't no nice whole game, cause my whole game is bigger than your master plan. But it your survival scam. And was raised up in the game. And you know, I was, I was a cold pimp out there in the world. You know. Bitch, you know why I am. I put the P in the field that bleeds up. Come to Ireland's national till I die. Money for grass for she's up. Money for grass for she's up. It show is leaves me where you're out the pocket breeze. It plugs up in my socket. It's hard the way she's airing out your lines. And if it wasn't for God, I would not be here today. So this is also a testimony. And it's uh, a, a good message for the kids to hear. So if you never heard of the pimp god, it's uh, the god the pimps pray to. Okay? The, the god of money and hoes and stuff. You know, he's supposed to give you everything now. Before the 90s, I already knew who God was. You know, I already knew who God was. I knew who Jesus was, and that was my God. But, you know, when I was coming up out here in Vegas, you know, you get wrapped up and you get mixed up in different things. And, you know, I was really leaning into the gangbanging world, you know, robbing people and gangbanging, but, you know, that's when uh, some of my peoples kind of caught wind of what I was up to. And they grabbed me and they pulled me aside and said, Look, you don't have to do it like this. There's a, a smoother, better way to do things. And I'm going to show you. So 
I learned to pimp from there, you know. And I learned how to how to survive in these streets and stuff if I had no money, but you know, I was introduced to PG is what everybody called him, the pimp god. It was like, you know, you gotta pray to the pimp god, man, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know, I don't, I don't believe in praying to any other guys. So I was, I was out there like, yeah, you know, whatever and stuff. So yeah, come on PG, come through for me, you know, but Deep in my heart, I knew it wasn't no pimp, God. And God knew that I knew. But God always had his hand on me. No matter what I was doing, no matter where I went, you know, I always felt God's protection over me, you know. But, uh, man, you know, it gets, it's a deep, game and stuff and it's very deceptive and you know when it comes to pimping you know it's almost like a magic and it, it, it is a magic and I'm telling you that there's people out there that are praying to a God called the pimp God and I'm telling you if you're listening to me right now you need to repent because this is this is worshiping another god no matter how much of a game it seems like you're worshiping another god now it's very deceptive in this manner here and that's because if you ask a pimp who the pimp god is he's going to say you know it's god the same god that everybody else worship except He's a pimp, you know. They say, you know, it's God, but you know, God's a pimp. He leans toward uh, pimping, and you know, uh, a lot of people who try to use the excuse to go be a hoe, they'll use the excuse, Mary Magdalene was a hoe. But Jesus told her, repent. You know, told her to stop doing what she's doing and repent. He didn't tell her to keep being no hoe. You know, so I'm, I'm on here to, to keep it real with you. You know, because nobody else will. I might be the last person to tell you that, you know, pimping is cursed. And I was told that when I was young too. I said, pimping is cursed, man. And I see what exactly what them old pimps was talking about, you know. It is, it's cursed, it's a magic, it's like a black magic that, you know, you gain from, but your soul loses, you know. And, uh, very sneaky, very, very sneaky. And not too many people are going to tell you this, but I'm here to tell you. Because the Lord sent me and pulled me out of this world. Now I have to give back to that world and let you know that pimping is cursed. And you know, one one of the old uh, one of the old pimp curses that I heard of when I was young was that uh, pimps only have daughters. And if you think about it, most every real pimp I know only has daughters and stuff, and, and that's some type of curse, you know, but it goes deeper than that, y'all. You know, pimping is cursed because it's, it's, it's practicing wickedness, practicing evil, therefore it's wicked. You know, wickedness is the practice of evil. You know, those that wake up in the morning and make haste to shed blood. You know, just like the Bible talk about all through the Proverbs, you're going you're gonna to hear about wisdom. You're going to hear about those that make haste to shed blood. You know, fools 
you know, and how they despised wisdom. So listen to the wisdom I'm trying to give you right now, y'all. You know, I know this message is ain't ain't for all of you, but you know, this is for a certain few, and I know you're watching right now. So please hear me out. And you need to repent. You know, I was pulled out of the game by God himself told me you know Chris I'm going to turn you over to a reprobated mind if you don't stop now and come and follow me and I've been following the Lord ever since I dropped everything and people didn't know what was going on with Philly Blunts you know Philly B, what's happening, man? What's going on with you? Man, God is calling me, y'all, and he's showing me visions and dreams that you all wouldn't even believe. But you know the good thing? Didn't nobody disrespect me? Didn't nobody talk bad about me or anything when I gave up the pimping and started following the Lord? You know, I they actually supported me, and that was a good thing, you know. So, when it comes to pimps, you know, it, it's such a fine line to the world about pimps because, you know, they could be portrayed as superheroes, or they could be portrayed as straight demons, you know what I'm saying? But, like, uh, me, I was a real smooth pimp out in the world and stuff, you know, I wasn't trying to put my hands on girls, uh, you know, if I can talk you into doing something for me, you know, I wasn't going to beat you into doing it for me, we call those gorilla pimps, but, you know, this message is not about learning about pimping and stuff, it's, it's about the world that I lived in and, and how God pull me out of the world and you know it's, it's such a dangerous game to play it's because it, you're actually you know it's like it's like uh, you're in the devil's shoes yourself you know and you walk up and down the strip or wherever you're at, you know, going to and fro, seeking whom you may devour. And I was looking for every beautiful woman in the world I could devour. And I'd do my best and, you know, I never forced anybody into anything, you know. It was always something that they wanted to do. But, you know, God is so good and... His mercy, you know, His mercy is is beyond belief and stuff, you know. And uh, I just wanted to tell y'all that, you know, this pimp God is is it goes deep, and you you know you might hear about you might hear from pimps themselves say, oh. Pimping has been around since the beginning of time and stuff, and you know what? It has. It's been around since or the beginning, you know, with the fallen angels and stuff. And like, you know, if you read into the book of Enoch, uh, in the book of Enoch, it talks about all the different things that that the angels, uh, you know, taught to men, the fallen ones, what they taught to humans and stuff. And everything from weapon making to, to casting spells and stuff. And, you know, that's where we get a lot of our, a lot of this cult knowledge and stuff. You know, these Illuminatis are following practices of fallen angels that they were taught but let me uh excuse me one second
I mean, I don't know how to stress it to y'all, man. You know, you know, you, pimping in today in our society is so glorified. And I ain't no hater. I'm just I'm talking on a God level here, you know, your soul, your soul, because that's what it's all about. You know, you're you're losing your soul while you're gaining the world. And you know, before I lost my soul, the Lord snatched me and said, "Chris, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? Come up out of here and stuff. You know, get." Get yourself together and get back in the Bible, you know. And I'm telling you, I was I was a real pimp. I was out there back in 1996 and stuff. You know what I'm saying? When I was just a teenager, 15 or 16 or something like that. You know, you know. I had one too many people talking about being a pimp back then. You know, and I was with hanging out with all these older cats, these vet pimps and stuff, you know? And it was just like, man, I just, I, I learned the game so well and I played it so well with the world and stuff. I had absolutely no reason to stop doing what I was doing. I had no reason. I loved it. I loved the life. I was, you know, I had everything I wanted. I drove fancy cars and wore suits and boots every day, you know, brims and gold frame glasses and had my down to the cane and all. You know, I was really pimping out there. And I was probably the only Filipino pimp that anybody really ever ran across in Las Vegas. And I was just a youngster, so, you know, and, I, and how pimping is glorified you know, it's, that's why you see it on TV nowadays, you know, Pimp My Ride and, you know, Snoop got a new show and, you know, all this pimping, you know. And let me tell you something. Pimping really wasn't hardcore in the mainstream until Jay-Z came out with Big Pimping. And see, I was pimping long before then. Talk about what's the reason? I'm a pimping every sense in the world. Why am I better trust and believe him? In the cup where I keep him. Till I need the work, till I need to beat it up. Then it's BB, then I'm picking them up. Then I play with it quick in the truck. <laughs> Many chicks want to put jigger piss in cups. Divorce them and split his bucks. Just because you got good sex. I'm going to break bread so you could be living it up. When they came out with that, oh, Pimpin' went crazy, and people went crazy, and, you know, all the girls wanted to be a hoe, and all the guys wanted to be a pimp, so it went from around 95, 96, uh, a few vet pimps, old pimps out there on the strip in Las Vegas to a million and one people out there trying to pimp and then I watched how it changed and stuff as soon as it hit the mainstream then everybody you know too short he been rapping about Pippa forever but you know everyone just kind of took it like okay yeah he, you know he's a pimp blah 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 but you know it really wasn't mainstream like that but when it hit mainstream Everybody wanted to be a pimp. Snoop went from selling dope and stuff and gang banging and with Master P and them. He got rich and bam, he called himself a pimp as soon as he saw it. And look, he's like the poster child for pimps now. Out. Bishop Don Magic One. Church. Uh, uh, about a week ago. <laughs> Incredible interview. Um, the one thing he said, because you know, in the in your movie, you mentioned the whole, you know, how you actually got into pimping and stuff like that. And the one thing that I talked to Bishop was that, you know, he said a lot of people thought that he pushed you into that, but in fact, he was saying how he told you to go back with your wife. Him, him, Minister Seymour, and a couple of other real pimps kept him one hundred. They they didn't want that for me. 
but I wanted that. I was like, I was a kid and um, I dreamed of being a pimp like my whole life. Like that was all I seen as a kid was a nigga with his nails done. And he had a light blue suit on with seven bitches and they all had on baby blue like him. He had a baby blue Cadillac. When he jump out, they open the door. That y'all just seeing them on the, on BT and listening to on the radio. All these people that have sold their souls and that's why you hear them with their little subliminal messages about the Illuminati or doing the little gestures and the, the eye and all that. You know, it's them, it's them showing you and stuff. Yeah, they're a part of the devil's little clan too, you know. But it's really serious, y'all, because it's only so much time left and I think God pulled me out at a, at a time where I'd tr be able to change myself and still have time to help others that are lost in the world get out of it, you know. You, you ain't stuck in the game, you know. I don't know who you're hanging out with. I don't know who the, the kids are in your life that are influencing you. But you got to get away from them too. You know, it's a, it's a lonely walk when you start walking with God. But you're really not lonely. It's a, you know, God's with you. There's so many saints that, that have, you know, been on different paths too. And, and are walking upright today, I should say. You know, but man, the pimping y'all, it... it it's demonic. It was, it was taught by the fallen angels. Let me just tell you like where and stuff, right? In, uh, in the book of Enoch, I, I believe this is chapter, they have it in Roman numerals, I-X. What is that, six? I-X, whatever that is. And then Michael, Uriel, Raphael and Gabriel looked down from heaven and saw much blood being shed upon the earth and all lawlessness being wrought upon the earth. And they said one to another, the earth made without inhabitant cries the voice of their crying up to the gates of heaven. And now to you, the holy ones of heaven, the souls of men make their suit, saying, Bring our cause before the Most High. And they said to the Lord of the ages, Lord of lords and God of gods, King of kings and God of the ages, the throne of thy glory standeth unto all the generations of the ages and thy name holy and glorious and blessed unto all the ages thou hast made all things and power over all things hast thou and all things are naked and open in thy sight and thou seest all things and nothing can hide itself from thee. Thou seest what Azazel hath done, who hath taught all unrighteousness on earth, and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven, which men were striving to learn. And Samaza, or Samjaza, Samaza, to whom thou hast given authority to bear rule over his associates, and they have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth, and have slept with the woman, and have defiled, and the whole earth has thereby been filled with blood and unrighteousness. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped the part. And Samjaza, 
to whom thou hast given authority to bear rule over his associates. And they have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth, and have slept with the women, and have defiled themselves, and revealed to them all kinds of sin. And they have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth, and have slept with the women, and have defiled themselves, and revealed to them all kinds of sins were revealed, right? And the woman have borne giants, and the whole earth has thereby been filled with blood and unrighteousness. And now, behold, the souls of those who have died are crying and making their suit to the gate of the deeds which are wrought on the earth. And thou knowest all things before they come to pass. And thou seest these things, and thou dost suffer them. And thou dost not say to us what we are to do to them in regard to thee.